What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Thomas and Friends Home Media Reviews. This episode is on the Christmas engines. Before we get started, I'm going to try to make this episode shorter than last week's. I have not did the tale of the brave HMR at the time of this recording. However, just at looking at the raw audio for that HMR, it's almost a half hour long. If that HMR is not a half hour long, I will be surprised. But I'll try to make this one a little shorter, a little more concise. I had a lot of thoughts on Tale of the Brave last week. Probably my most controversial review for home media reviews, but I'm okay with that because the opinions that are stated here are my own, no matter how controversial they may be. So, the Christmas engines. Let's go ahead and jump right into the history section. So the Christmas Engines actually has two dates for the U.S. However, one is for the physical release, and the other one is for the digital HD. The digital HD of the Christmas Engines came out on October 14th, and then the physical release came out on October 28th of 2014. I'm not even going to rant about, you know, uh, put the Christmas releases on December because... It's clear to me now that that's never going to happen, especially now that Thomas on DVD is kind of dead. Um, at the time of this recording, we haven't gotten any new DVD releases since Thomas's Holiday Collection and Journey Beyond Sodor on DVD. So, um, I think we're circling the drain here, folks. But, who knows, there could be something new that comes out by the time this HMR airs. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right into the close-up section of the Christmas Engines. <music> Alrighty everyone, here's your close-up look at the Christmas Engines. Starting off here, Tom's and Friends logo up at the top. The Christmas Engines uh, directly below it in a very Christmassy looking font. However, I would have preferred if they would have had Christmas in green. Or like the and Engines in green. I love Christmas in red. I said Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Chrysler. I would have preferred if they would have had it green, red, green, or red, green, red. But, you know, it's fine how it is. Santa Claus up there going past the moon with his reindeer and Thomas and Percy looking up in awe because oh Santa's real even though spoiler alert he's not. I really like this poster art. It's very very nice and it's embossed. I can feel the I can feel the etchings in the etchings the etchings in Thomas's snowplow and I can feel his face and all that. I, I love when slipcovers are embossed. It shows that they actually put effort into this. The side, hit entertainment logo, Thomas Friends logo, the Christmas engines, portrait of Thomas in gold, DVD logo, universal down there at the bottom, back, Thomas Friends logo again, on track with Christmas cheer, got uh, your UPC code showing through the slipcover there, blurb out on the disc, Thomas covered in lights with a tree behind him, bonus features include It's Christmas Time, which is a music video, and Guess Who Puzzles, Again, third week in a row with no game. That's weird. That's I'm honestly kind of missing those games now, even though most of them stunk. Your link to the Thomas Friends website and tech specs and stuff down there at the bottom. So, slide up the slip cover there. Again, it is embossed. It's exactly the same poster art side underneath, except, ooh, you have more. These are the actual tech specs. This was just copyright information. I guess that they didn't want to put the specs on the slipcover, so they just put it um, on the actual DVD case. But that's pretty much the same. There was no insert. I bought this new. You also have your disc, which is a squished up version of the poster art. And again, that cheap plastic. I wish that companies would go back to actually using the hard plastic that they used back in like 2004, 2005 when people actually cared about DVD releases. Look how far we've fallen. I mean, it's better than the Eco Case, but still, it's so weak, and I, I don't like it. So, that's your close-up. Let's go ahead and transition into our menu tour of the Christmas Engines. Alrighty, everyone. Here's your menu tour for the Christmas Engines. I complimented Engines to the Rescue a few weeks ago on its, on its options and how it changed things up. But here with the Christmas Engines, we are right back to the same four options. Same format and all that. It's exactly like the poster art, the menu card here. 
play, episode selection, language selection, and bonus features. What episodes do we have on the Christmas Engines? Oh, we're back to five. Once again, I guess five will be the norm from now on. Funny, I I remember it being six. It's either five or six that's the norm for these things. Last Train for Christmas, Long Lost Friend, Duck in the Humbug, Duck in the Water, and The Perfect Gift. Duck in the Water really isn't a Christmas episode per se, but it takes place during winter. And I guess they only made four Christmas-themed uh, stories for season 18. Language selection, English, Spanish, and French. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's the back card. Or back part of the poster on the DVD. Interesting. Bonus features... There is no game, it's just, it's Christmas time, sing-along music video, and guess who puzzles. We have not had a game in a while. I know I said this during the menu tour, or at least I think I did. I'm kind of missing the games, you know, as as bad as they were, and some of them were pretty bad. I kind of miss having something to do during these menu tours, rather than just, you know, go around the menu and show you those things. But, yeah, I don't think we'll see another game for a long time, uh, at least with how it's looking. So that's your menu tour for the Christmas Engines. Let's go ahead and head on back and answer the five main questions, as always. All right, so we're back from the close-up, and now it's time to answer the five main questions, as always. Number one, where can you pick this product up? Online retailers. I bought mine off of Amazon. Surprising, I know, right? Mine came with the slipcover after I bought it off Amazon. I know, I was shocked, too. Number two, is this product still being printed nowadays? No, it is not. Actually, it was reprinted for Christmas, I think, in 2016. Universal actually brought it back that year. It was either 2016 or 2015, so that was kind of cool, but not for Christmas 2017. Number three, should you pick this product up? Yes, actually, you should pick up the Christmas Engines. I like these stories. I think they, these are some of the best Christmas stories Thomas and Friends has to offer. Last Train for Christmas has a lot of heart to it. I actually really felt for um, the passengers that had to get home for the holidays and the fact that Sodor basically has the most extreme weather conditions ever. It's either really snowy, really, really hot, or really rainy over there. I mean, it's Sodor is like the Bermuda Triangle with extremes. Last Train for Christmas is a very heartfelt and very good story, and I think it's the best story from season 18. I know Roman's TWR Empire will agree with me on that. The other stories are also really, really well done. Long Lost Friend is really cool, bringing Gator back for the holidays. It's kind of a silly premise, you know. Oh, I can't find Gator. Well, Gator's at blah, blah, blah. Oh, Gator just left. He went to this place. And then they just chased him around sort of. And then at the end, they finally reunite, so it's nice. The Perfect Gift is one I'm not really too big of a fan of. I mean, it's okay. It gives Reg some much-needed character after he was basically non-existent in Tale of the Brave. He had one scene and maybe three lines of dialogue. Dunk in the Humbug is a really good one. Duck in the Water. I always forget that one's on this release. It's really not a Christmas-themed episode. It's more of like a late fall, early winter-themed story. But it's it's actually really good, too. I really like the comedy in it. Also, the irony of Duck's name being Duck, and he's in a water. Or he's in the water. So, you know, irony. In its basic form, but I find it funny. So with all that being said, yeah, I recommend the Christmas Engines. It's really good. It's one of the best Christmas-themed releases ever, and I enjoy watching it every holiday season. Number four, where should you pick this product up? Same answer as number one. And number five, what price should you pay? Regular version, five to six. Slip-covered version, ten to eleven. All right, so that's the HMR on the Christmas Engines. A really, really good Christmas release. I don't have much to say about it because I like all the episodes on it and I don't really have any other thoughts on them other than that. Except for, you know, Last Train for Christmas. Has a lot of heart to it. I really enjoy watching it. And I really enjoy watching this every holiday season. I started this tradition last year um, where I watch every single Thomas Holiday release. That's good. I don't watch, you know, Merry Winter Wish or anything like that. That have quality stories on them every year. So, um... Last Christmas, I watched Ultimate Christmas, Santa's Little Engine, Christmas Engines. I can't remember if I watched Thomas's Christmas Carol or not. I might have forgotten that one. Um, I know I watched Tinsel on the Tracks, and I know I watched Christmas on Sodor. Maybe I did watch Christmas Carol, and I just forgot about it. I don't remember a lot about that one. That'll be an interesting one when we get to that HMR. So anyway, next week features some of the best stories from Season 18. I'll be saying that a lot because Season 18 is a really good season. Next week, we're talking about Signals Crossed. 
So I'll see you all then. Thank you all for watching, and as always, good night, everybody.